Happy Friday, Junior. My name is Kat, and if you're new here, welcome. I share watercolor and general art tutorials every single Thursday, AKA Friday, Junior. Today, we're gonna be filling up a sketchbook page using some Matisse-inspired abstract designs and gouache paints, just to have play with different colors and to introduce you to a new medium. If you don't have gouache, um, feel free to use what you have, markers, uh, acrylic paints, or your watercolor. If you're new to gouache, it's basically an opaque watercolor paint. I have three colors here, the primary colors plus white, so we're just gonna be mixing up our own colors today to get some harmony. The reason why you wanna be starting out with just three and mixing up your paints is that you'll get a more cohesive painting because all the paint colors will be related if you're mixing your colors together rather than just buying one tube of paint of the color that you wanted. You can make a lot of colors with just these three paints. So if you're new to gouache, I'll just tell you what these paint colors are maybe if you're interested. So I have Thalo Cyanine Blue. Um, we've got Hansa Yellow. Chiral Red and this is Zinc White. So Matisse was a master at color. He was coming from a period where people were using color quite literally to represent their subjects and he went completely wild and went the other direction and was using bright reds and greens and blues to show his subjects and people, it was quite different and people hated it. I don't know if a lot of people appreciate it because we're so used to seeing the things that aren't the colors that they are, whether it's like cartoon or even logos, like everything's quite representative now. And a lot of that is thanks to Matisse and his use of color. This one really pissed people off because look at the color that he was using. Definitely not true to tone, to skin tone or anything. This is his wife. So today the um, patterns that I wanna be playing with came from his later years when he was actually making collages out of gouache painted paper. So stuff like this. So he was quite bedridden and so he wasn't able to paint. So instead what he'd do is cut or draw almost sculpture, sculpture like um, shapes out of paper and get his assistants to put them up on canvas for him. And so I think it's really cool. And we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna mix up some paint here. You don't need a lot of pigment because these things go a super long way. Just take a little bit out from the tube and then mix slowly because you're gonna be using water to dilute and mix them onto your paper. I'm gonna play around and find the colors that I want. I want like a blue and like an orange, I think, and a pink and then just like pure yellow. I think that would kind of be cool, but do whatever you want, because it's your sketchbook. Testing colors, testing colors. And then if I have to adjust my colors, then I will. Yeah, that actually feels very Matisse-like to me. Okay, I dig it. So, so now we're gonna draw our shapes on our sketchbook. These are just gonna be kind of loosely organic shapes, kind of like this. And in this book, it's just a Taskin's art book. I love these books on the artists. I think they have, they're such great resources for color and just to get to know a little bit more about the artists themselves. So I collect them. One of my favorite paintings by Matisse, I guess it's kind of a, a collage, is his work, The Parakeet and the Mermaid. And it's an 11 foot by 25 foot piece where he was really fond of his garden, but at this point he was bedridden, and so he wanted to bring his gardens inside to him. So he would actually have painted sheets of gouache, and then he'd use scissors and cut out the shapes, almost like a sculptural approach to creating artwork. And so that's kind of the shapes that I wanna be drawing today in my sketchbook, and it's kind of like these. This is called Polynesia the sea, so you can kind of see that it looks kind of like coral reefs or seaweed. And we're just gonna be making a bunch of squigglies in our journal, and you can make whatever you'd like. But it's our work, it's our, it's our sketchbook, so you do you. Um, I'm just gonna start from the corner and work out. I find this so relaxing. Pudic, you don't really need to be thinking about anything while you're doing these. And it doesn't have to represent anything because we're not trying to like make, there's no pressure to make something like look a certain way. 
Now that we have our shapes drawn out, doesn't have to be perfect, we're just gonna cover it up with paint. Um, with gouache, you can draw darker if that helps you, because it's quite opaque, so it'll completely cover your pencil markings. Um, so I'm just gonna start painting. With gouache paints, you kind of want the consistency. When it comes out of the tube, it kind of has like a yogurt consistency. And you want to add water into the paint um, so that you kind of have a coffee creamer consistency. It spreads out nice and even, and it dries down thick. If you kind of go too far and it turns into like a tea or a milk consistency, you're just gonna get patchy paint and you don't want that. We're playing around in a sketchbook. It's meant to be experimental and when you have art block, it's really good to go to your sketchbook and try things out. So with this blue, as you can see here, I am just gonna use this middle palette to try to make sure that I get the consistency I want before I add it into my paper. So I'm gonna just bounce around with color here. It, you do whatever you'd like. And with gouache paints, water-based gouache, you could reactivate them with water. And if I were using my plate, I put down a lot of pigment on here, it would be a waste. And then I can't use that plate again until I was done with all the paint. With this, I can easily just put it away and then wet it, spray it down with water, and then pick it up and paint again something else with these colors. You don't want to mix using your nice watercolor paintbrushes with gouache because gouache is a little bit um, rougher on your bristles and watercolor brushes are really soft so I just keep things separate. I'll use like synthetic brushes or old watercolor brushes that I don't care too much about anymore. You can already see that the paint is starting to dry and it's drying flat and that's one of the reasons people will use gouache over say acrylic or oil is that it dries flat and has that graphic looking effect to it. Kind of like um, like comic books or Japanese print blocks kind of have that flat two dimensional, one dimensional look to it. Another interesting fact about Henry Matisse, if you want to know, is that he never planned on being an artist. He wasn't just like this gifted person that was on the trajectory to become an artist. He was actually in law school and uh, he got sick with appendicitis and ended up having to take a break from school. His mom bought him some art supplies and he picked it up and he really liked it. Some people better recognize Picasso and Picasso was a contemporary with Matisse. I guess it's worth saying that they were friends and they were rivals. So Picasso was like a, a genius from right from the get-go. People actually appreciated his art from the beginning, I guess. Matisse, his work was wildly unpopular. And at the time, you, the people that said what was or wasn't art was extremely academic. So they would put up shows at a salon and have your artwork there. And people hated his art because he just went and did something so different with color. He wanted to use more color and be more vibrant with color. And people didn't like that. They wanted things the way they are because again, the realm of academia. So one of the critiques that Matisse got and still gets today when people look at his artwork is that a kid could have done that. <laughs> His artwork is deceptively simple. Like it, it, he understood color theory so well. When you looked at a piece, it was very balanced and harmonious. And I think that's something that kids couldn't really do. But it is fun and it's playful. Um, and that's what he wanted his artwork to look like. I'll show you some of the other ones that I did. I just did a black blobs with a bunch of oranges, of course, with tiny specks of oranges on top. And then this one's my favorite that I did. And then, or I'm already working on painting it on a wooden canvas because I had so much fun doing these. I guess that was it. Now you know a little bit more about Matisse. Little art history lesson. We got some work in our sketchbook done. If you like this, um, give me a thumbs up. And you can follow me on my Instagram, hey, it's Friday Junior. And I'll catch you next Thursday. Bye.